the cubic formula. In this video, we're going to state and prove the cubic formula. But before we begin, here are a couple of facts which you'll be using throughout the course of the proof. First, I'm going to do a lot of quick algebra, and I'm going to be using the facts that quantity m plus n squared is m squared plus 2mn plus n squared. I'm going to use that without warning. Also, quantity m plus n cubed is equal to m cubed plus 3m squared n plus 3mn squared plus n cubed. Also, we're going to make a definition. Let w be the number 1 half plus rad 3 over 2i. This is an imaginary number, sometimes called a cube root of unity. And here is why. It has a few special properties we're going to use. For instance, w squared is its own complex conjugate. 1 half minus rad 3 over 2i. Also, w cubed is equal to 1. That's why it's called a cube root of unity. And from this equation, if we divide both sides by w, we get double squared is 1 over w. It's multiplicative inverse is its square. And dividing both sides of this by w squared, we get w is equal to 1 over w squared. We'll use that later on. Now, let's begin. We're going to start with the equation x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now, if the cubic equation you have does not have 1 as a leading coefficient, just divide both sides of the equation by that leading coefficient, and you'll end up with a 1. Now, we're going to make the first of many substitutions. Let x equal y minus a over 3. Then we're going to plug that in and see some amazing simplification. So we substitute, and we're going to get y minus a over 3 cubed plus a times y minus a over 3 squared plus b times y minus a over 3 plus c is equal to 0. Next, we'll expand these terms and actually line things up in columns to make life easier later. This first term is y cubed plus 3y squared minus a over 3 plus 3 times y times negative a over 3 squared plus negative a over 3 cubed. Expanding the binomial, we're going to get an a in front of each term, y squared plus a times 2y times negative a over 3 plus a times negative a over 3 squared. Then the linear term plus by plus b times negative a over 3 plus c is all equal to 0. Now we'll simplify each of these terms. We get y cubed, then we get this 3 canceling with that 3, minus a y squared. Next is plus a squared over 3y and negative a cubed over 27. That's the first line simplified. The second line is plus a y squared. Notice some cancellation is going to happen. Next term is minus 2a squared over 3y. It's going to combine nicely with the term above it. Plus a cubed over 9. Next we have a plus by minus ab over 3 and a plus c equal to 0. We're going to need a little bit more space. When we gather like terms, we're going to get the following. We get a y cubed from up here. These two quadratic terms cancel, which is actually the point of the substitution. See, these terms combine to give you a b minus a squared over 3y for a linear term. Then, see, these fractions combine. This fraction I can rewrite is 3a cubed over 27. So I'll get 2a cubed over 27, combining these fractions right here, minus ab over 3 plus c equals 0. Now, to make our life simpler again, I'm going to make a few more substitutions. Let p equal this quantity here, and I'm going to let q equal this quantity here. So now, 
our cubic equation, sometimes called the depressed cubic because we've removed one of the terms, has a form y cubed plus py plus q equals zero. And this equation is what we'd like to solve. So moving on to the next page, again, we have y cubed plus py plus q equals zero. It's our starting point. We have formulas for p and q. What we're going to do is another substitution. Let's say let e y equal z minus p over 3z. Now, I'm going to substitute that in. Then what we'll get is z minus p over 3z cubed plus p times z minus p over 3z plus q equals 0. Expanding this out, we're going to get z cubed plus 3z squared times minus p over 3z plus 3z times minus p over 3z quantity squared plus minus p over 3z quantity cubed plus pz minus p squared over 3z plus q equals 0. Now these terms are going to simplify even further. Get a z cubed. This first term will simplify down into z, 3z squared, 3z, gives us a minus pz. Then we'll get over here, 3z cancels one of the 3z's down here. Then we'll get a plus p squared over 3z minus p cubed over 27z cubed plus pz minus p squared over 3z plus q, already pretty simple, equals 0. Then notice we get some great canceling. This term, negative pz, cancels positive pz. It's positive p squared over 3z cancels the negative p squared over 3z, leaving us with z cubed plus q minus p cubed over 27z cubed is equal to 0. Now I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by z cubed, leaving me with z to the sixth plus q z cubed minus p cubed over 27 equals 0. Now it turns out this equation right here is really a quadratic equation, which we know how to solve, just in the variable z cubed. So we're going to solve this on the next page. z cubed squared. The next term was plus q z cubed minus p cubed over 27 equals 0. Then we get z cubed is equal to, by the quadratic formula, minus q plus or minus the square root of q squared minus 4p cubed over 27, all divided by 2. Now we can simplify this a little bit. We could rewrite this as negative q over 2 plus or minus 1 half times the square root of q squared minus 4p cubed over 27. Next, I actually want to bring this 1 half inside the radical, where it'll become the quantity 1 fourth minus q over 2 plus or minus radical q squared over 4 minus p cubed over 27. And then the things underneath the radical is actually a square and a cube themselves, so I'll rewrite them as q over 2 quantity squared minus p over 3 quantity cubed. And that's z cubed. Now there's two solutions for z cubed. I'm going to say let a equal the solution with a plus sign. I'm going to say let capital B equal the solution with the minus sign. So we have two solutions for z. Now the other thing I should show you is we have z cubed equals a and z cubed equals b. Well, we actually have six solutions for z. From this first equation we get z equals the cube root of a is one solution. However, we also have the cube root of a times w. You can check this as another solution because when you cube this, you get a times w cubed from the beginning of the video is 1. We also get the cube root of a times w squared.
So we actually get three solutions for z here. And we'll also get three solutions from z over here. z cubed, or actually not z cubed, but just z by itself. z is the cube root of b, but also the cube root of b times w, and the cube root of b times w squared. So we get six solutions for z, which is interesting because you'd think with a cubic equation we'd end up with three solutions. Well, we get six at this point, and then go on to the next page. With our six solutions, we'll plug them in for y, say y is equal to z minus p over 3z, and remember our six solutions for z. z is equal to cube root of a, cube root of b, cube root of a times w, cube root of b times w, cube root of a times w squared, cube root of b times w squared, Now, if we plug these in, turns out, because of this funny expression, we actually only get three solutions. Some of the solutions are repeated. For instance, if you plug in cube root of a minus p over 3 cube root of a, one fact, which is kind of interesting and extremely useful, cube root of a times cube root of b, if you multiply these out, you're going to get negative p over 3. It's more easy to see this if you actually multiply out the original a and b, and you notice you'll get negative p over 27, then you take the p cubed over 27, then you take the cube root of both sides, and you get this expression. But since this is true, you have that the cube root of b is equal to negative p over 3 times the cube root of a. And this fact allows us to simplify the expression over here into cube root of a plus cube root of b. And this is one of our solutions. If we plug in another solution for z, for instance, cube root of a times w minus p over 3 cube root of a times w, well, again, this simplifies a whole lot. Cube root of a times w, this part, p, over 3 cube root of a, that we know is equal to the cube root of b, so plus the cube root of b, then we have 1 over w, and from our notes in the very beginning, that's w squared. That's our second solution. And finally, cube root of a times w squared minus p over 3 cube root of a w squared. Again, this first part simplifies. We've got a cube root of a times w squared plus cube root of b times, well, 1 over w squared from our introductory notes. That's just w, and that's our third solution. Well, you might ask, what happens if we plug in cube root of b, cube root of b times w, cube root of b times w squared in for z in this equation? Well, it turns out we just get these three same solutions again. So these are the solutions to the cubic equation in y, and then by unsubstituting one more time, you could transform these into the solutions for x. And that's it, the solution to the cubic equation.